I literally just got back from dropping off the Fusion UV unit at FedEx, so it's on its way back to Sios when I arrived home to find this box on my front porch. Now, a couple of things while I work on getting it opened up and unpacked. I don't get paid for this. This is not some kind of sponsored ad. Here at Laramie K Optician Works, we pride ourselves on being as vendor neutral as we possibly can. Heck, I, I don't even get to keep this stuff. The bottom line here is pretty simple. If you aren't working, we, Laramie K, we aren't working either. So we are doing what we can to find ways to make your job, optician, safer and easier to do in these difficult times. I really do believe that some of these items can help you do that. So let's take a look inside and see what we have here. And we'll take a look at the other items in the catalog as well. Let's get going. I've got some of the products here and we'll play with the ones that I have and we'll talk a little bit about the ones that I don't. Prevention and protection for your practice from Sios Sentinelli International Optical Supply. Now, Sios is the American distributor for the Centro Stile line out of Italy. We talked about the UV frame sterilizer or the Fusion UV unit last time we got together. So there's no reason to go over that. Uh, response to that video has been overwhelming, by the way. Uh, Pre-printed sanitized tags. Now, in my mind, I always think of the place I worked, which was fairly small. In my head, it would be anything that was on the board would be sterilized. Anything that wasn't would be something that would have to be treated again. But, of course, that's not always the case. Some places are huge and different people will have different tasks and there'll be different piles of stuff sitting around through the day. So you're never sure of what has been treated and what hasn't. So we have got these handy tags tags and we would just throw those on if you were in doubt and these are reusable of course and then of course your customer would be sure that this particular frame has in fact been sanitized ultrasonic cleaners i don't have one of those here my own history with ultrasonic cleaners has really been pretty hit or miss but maybe they've improved since i used one last time they are a great idea. Look in the lower right hand corner here. Back to clean RTU disinfectant. Used undiluted, this formula is effective against corona and other viruses. So it can be used as an ultrasonic cleaner solution or just sprayed onto hard surfaces around the order office. <laughs> um, so, you know, that combination, the ultrasonic cleaner and the, the actual disinfectant that is designed to address the corona and other viruses, that might be a hell of a winning combination there. I know hand sanitizer and disinfectants are a little bit hard to come by. I was looking for some basic old Fantastic or 409 cleaner for my workshop and man, the shelves are cleaned out, Amazon's cleaned out. So if I could buy a cube or a gallon of hand sanitizer or surface disinfectant, that would be a pretty good thing to get my hands on right now. Also have uh, alcohol wipes. Current maximum order is a quantity of five on those. There are a couple of notes, fine print if you will, on that page that I need you to pay attention to. Those two, to disinfect. Now disinfect means that you're attempting to kill 100% of the germs and virus that are on that surface, or basically trying to make a sterile surface. It says that surfaces must remain wet for three minutes, then allowed to air dry. For the norovirus, Surfaces must remain wet for 10 minutes. Okay, really pay attention there. Uh, then allowed to air dry. To me, that would mean making a cloth or a towel damp, moist, not saturated, not dripping, but damp, and leaving it on that surface for 10 full minutes, setting a timer on my phone. Your high use areas, your dispensing table at the end of the day, your intake desk, those places. Now to sanitize, that takes 10 seconds and then allow it to air dry. So please read these instructions, follow them. Yes, guys, you need to read the instructions and follow them as well. Uh, and it's the only way you're really gonna be safe there. So um, be careful. Let's see what's next. 
Anti-fog aids we're actually gonna cover in a separate video. We have a couple of our own through the lab, and so we'll, we'll combine those three or four together. We have the seg height measuring tool, and a seg gauge, if you will. And if I wanted to, if I needed to take a segment height or a fitting height for a progressive, what's wonderful about these is unlike a dot alone, if I put these on, I put these on you, and I take out my pen and I dot, looking at you, I can immediately tell how high my fitting height is. I don't have to take them off of you, take out a PD stick, measure my dot, and then realize that I'm either pass or fail. This, because I can tell immediately if you're at my magic beautiful 18, I don't have to take the glasses on and off repeatedly. So it's a safety thing. Signage, we've got some signage here. I'll, I'll show you those on the floor as, uh, as well. Got a nice weight here, stop the spread. And we've got our actual standing one here as well. And um, we'll play with those a little bit on the floor. They are designed to be stuck to the floor. Removable and repositionable textured non-skid laminated coating. Ideal for hard surface floorings, but not for carpeting. Floor strips. We've got two different kinds. We've got the green and the yellow. I don't know if you can see it. I'll get you a close up. That's actually a glasses pattern. This could be used as full strips. So these can be cut as well. Uh, we'll play it around with those a little bit in our intro there. And you can see, you can you know design your offices ever you, however you want, and uh, see if they can't help you herd the cats, so to speak. <laughs> Protection for instruments. This is the pupillometer one. Now I did play around with this for just a couple of moments before going live here. And it took me a few minutes to kind of figure out, first of all, how this would work and, and if it would work. And I put this on, there we go. And I was thinking like, well, that's kind of weird. I can't really get my nose here. But of course, if I had a hole here, then I would just be breathing on you. So it's actually designed specifically to work that way. And it's a heck of a nice size shield. And I can put my nose up there. I can still see just fine, beautiful, clear white green there, good shield, and it, it has to function this way. And it's a little weird, it seems a little awkward, but heck, it would certainly work. It's got a lot of coverage, and let's face it, this is the single most dangerous thing you're gonna do at your job as an optician these days. This is really getting up and close and personal with somebody. If I had to take PDs using a corneal reflex pupillometer, I would have one of these. Uh, they have other stuff like that for slit lamps, auto refractors, tonometers. They have little chin rest, forehead rest, tissue packets. They have an entire series of plexiglass protection dividers, different sizes. I have asked them if they would please consider making an hourglass shaped one. I would, I would think the, I'd like to be able to reach around do this, do this, reach around and do this maybe. Uh, seems like a little cutout there would be a, a little bit more helpful and a little bit more catered towards the working optician. We'll see if they take up my suggestion or not. We have face masks, which I understand are a little bit hard to get, but you got them. The mask ear saver, let's take a look at that. Now I have Wimpid's disease, And I think connected to that, my ears are also quite far back on my head. Now, one of them is also a little higher than the other one, but we won't mention that. And although this mask is fixed, you can use these to kind of extend the reach a little bit. So it's a little bit more comfortable to wear. Put my mask on right. You can see it's, it's relieving that. It's not pulling on my ears. It's spreading it out. It's dissipating the pull across the back of my head, 
which is far more comfortable. And then we have our shield, face shield kit. Let's take a look at that. Let's see. Yeah. Kind of. Again, maybe if I didn't have my pupillometer shield, this thing could come in rather handy. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that would work. I could still use this if I had to. I could still work with you, talk with you. So I'm certainly blocking my breath going towards you. We've got safety goggles. Let's take a look at these things. Well, they are huge. Uh, they're also European approved, ANSI approved for their size. They actually fit quite well. I make this look good. They're very inexpensive. And if you combine this with a mask, I'd say you've got a pretty good level of protection here. They have nitrile gloves. Those are an excellent choice and a little bit hard to find. So if they've got them, I might grab a box. Now, at the end of this video, there's gonna be a list of websites. I asked my wife, who's a family nurse practitioner, nursing instructor, doctor, to gather up some good sources for you. First, on how to properly wear a mask. Two, how to properly wear and use gloves. And there's even one there on how to maintain a sterile field. Now, of course, that's not what you're trying to do as an optician, but it'll give you a little bit better idea about how difficult it is to maintain control over your environment. And the last item is our digital thermometer. Now, I would strongly urge you, once you get this, to open up and carefully read the instructions. There's a lot of setup here. You can do, of course, Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can color code it. You can high low code it. You can use actual temperature readings. And there's some tips on how to get an accurate reading, do's and don'ts about when you do take a temperature and when you don't. Nicely made. And you set it up the way you want. And that is that. There is the address for Asayos. If you want to go ahead, go online and order any of their personal protective equipment items. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching me on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there. Go ahead, click it now. Watching us on Facebook, please give us a like, leave a comment, make sure every lens in every frame that you touch comes from Laramie K. And I will see you again next week.